Hi, welcome to Nebi Invest. So today I'm going to look at uh, potential contrarian stock buyers. So what does that mean? Now, if you've been uh, an investor over the past few months, you've probably done very well because we've seen a very bullish run in the stock markets throughout the world. And we've seen companies' share price just uh, go with those runs, of, of course. And, and more than likely, you've uh, been successful with you, any of your holdings. But there are some examples of some companies' share price who have been doing the complete opposite and have been going down over the past few months. And I'm, I'm going to be looking at these companies, the five of these companies in particular, and I'm starting to follow these companies more closely because share prices have been going down and they're entering really interesting places, their share prices, where Either I might add to my holdings, so I actually do hold two of these companies, or I might buy into these companies. So looking at five companies, a wide range of companies, um, from almond producers all the way to church donation um, providers or software or apps or whatever. So anyway, let's get into it. One of the companies, the first company is Select Harvest. And a way to look at this company is they're very similar to a miner. So you don't mine for almonds. So a Select Harvest is all about almonds. They produce almonds and they also make almond-related products. So the way they're very similar to a miner is uh, their share price is sort of a slave or highly correlated to the price of almonds. Just like a miner share, miner's share price is highly correlated to the price of the underlying commodity they're mining. So that's just like a Select Harvest. So Selects half the share price falls and rises with the almond prices. And over the past year, this the share price of Select Harvest has uh, gone down a fair bit. And that's because we saw a bumper crop of almonds in the United States. The United States produce 80 to 85 percent of almonds in the world, and I think the majority of that is produced in California. So they saw a bumper crop of almonds in California and just uh, through demand and supply um, factors, we saw the almond prices go down, and that's fair enough. If you see a lot of almonds onto the market, the price of almonds should go down. And likewise, we seen, have seen this, the price of the share price of Select Harvest go down with that. And I'm interested in that because I like to see, I like to invest in miners at the bottom of the cycle, and we might be towards the bottom of this the almond cycle. But uh, I'll be I'm tracking the almond prices moving forward, and that's how you actually buy or trade a company like Select Harvest. You actually look at the underlying product or the underlying mineral or commodity in this case almonds, and if you can see that going turning into an uptrend, then you buy into the company that mines or produces that commodity. So they also released their yearly report on the 30th of November, and it was a disappointment, and uh, we saw decreases in revenue, operating cash flow. But that's understandable because the price of almonds has gone down. And if the price of almonds starts going up, we're going to see improving numbers, uh, financial numbers. So this chart is the back the previous year. We've seen a good level of support around $5.25. It's hit that three times and bounced off it. And so what's going to happen in the next few days is going to be highly important. It's trying to get there again, testing that level of support. If it falls through $5.25, that would be very bearish. If it starts to move higher than, say, $6.50, that would be bullish. So I'm just going to wait to see what happens to the share price uh, moving forward because uh, when I show you the, the longer-term chart, $5.25 is not the absolute low of the share price. You might say the absolute low of the share price uh, when you look at the five-year weekly chart is around $4, which was reached in January 2000 or February 2016 and again in the middle of 2017 when the almond prices were at their low. You actually see the almond prices were at their high of 13 or in July 2015 when the share price of Select Harvest was about $13. Now, I'm going to do a dedicated Select Harvest video either tomorrow or the next day and in that video, I'll compare the chart for Select Harvest to the price of almonds. And you can see just how highly correlated uh, the share price is to the price of almonds. But anyway, so there is potential that Select Harvest share price could get towards that $4. If it does get to $4, I think I might even um, 
buy into this company because I think that's almost at the absolute low. I don't see it falling much below that. So $4 is the number for me when it comes to select harvest. You could say $5.25 in the short term because that's been a surprise support uh, for the, this whole year. But I think $4 is definitely a price you want to be looking at in the case of this company. The next company is a company I do own. I've held this for a long time. It's been one of the be my best uh, performers in my portfolio over the last five years. But we've seen a significant share price weakness in the past about four months. Share price has gone from $20 to about $13. So it's lost uh, approximately, watch that, 35% of its value. And there's some reasons behind that. Now, I've really trusted the management of this company, but my trust in the management of this company has been eroded over the last three or four months. Now, I've done a video on that. Um, so have a look at that video if you want to understand why my trust has been eroded. Now, they did do a profit downgrade. That's one part of the story. But um, around $13 is a very interesting price for A2 milk. It's a good or potential a good uh, level of support. We've seen it hit it once uh, a few months ago or about a month ago and bounce off it. And right on Friday, the 4th of December, we saw that happen again. It hit $13 and bounced really well off it. Uh, share price increased by quite a bit. Now, the other thing I do with A2 Milk, because I do own this, so I have a good look at their financials. And the main thing I look for in their financials is I look at revenue, profit, and operating cash flow, cash flow growth. And then I compare that to the share price growth over the same period. You can see that in the bottom there. I've got uh, CAGR just is means compounded annual growth rate. So I'm just going to refer to that as the growth rate. So what I'm looking for here is the growth rate of operating cash flow to be greater than the growth rate of share price. That means the market isn't pricing in all the growth into the share price. If you look at my video of Amazon the other day, you'll see that the the growth rate of operating cash flow mirrors the growth in share price almost perfectly. And so you can actually sort of price Amazon just based off their growth rate of operating cash flow. So what I'm looking for in companies like A2 Milk, but it's not really a tech company, so it's a little bit different than some other companies. But what I look for is, is, is just compare the operating cash flow growth to the share price growth. And in this case, we're seeing the, the operating cash flow be significantly higher than the share price growth. But we've seen the share price growth dip back over the last uh, four or five months because of that profit downgrade. So more than likely what's happening is the market is pricing in the fact that the operating cash flow growth is going to be lower when the half yearly results are, are announced in February. I think that's more than likely that's what's going to happen. So that 111% growth rate per year is going to be lower um, by the half yearly. And I think that's what's factoring in the share price. I think it's not going to be that significantly lower um, that the share price deterioration in the past uh, few months has been justified. I think $13 or around that mark could be a good price to buy in, especially if uh, this uh, profit downgrade is just a blip on the long-term future of A2 milk, which it could be in the long term. Next company is Push pay, this is the church donation. So they have some sort of app where you know churchgoers can donate to the church using the app. So they don't have to go to the church physically or they don't have to handle any cash. So this is sort of the future. Um, but they've push pay have found a niche and have really gone into their niche and done a very good job. I think they're focused on mainly the big the mega churches in the United States, which there is a lot, especially in the South focused on that. We saw a rapid uh, growth in the share price in May. Now, uh, even though I'm, I'm going to say the share price went from a dollar to a dollar sixty, really it didn't because I did a four for one share split on the 26th of November. So these prices here that I'm showing you are taking into account the share split. So they're adjusted for the share split. So the price of one dollar, which I said in May, was actually four dollars and it increased to not one dollar sixty, actually increased to six dollars forty. But this has been adjusted for the share split. But anyway, it, it increased from a dollar to a dollar sixty, and then ever since then, it's been trading in between this range. And the range is those two um, horizontal brown lines, and the top of that range is around two dollars twenty-five, two dollars thirty, and the bottom of that range is around a dollar seventy. So every time it gets to the top of that range, we see some selling. Every time it gets to the bottom of the range, we see some buying. 
And right now it's near the bottom of the range and we've seen share price actually dip back ever since the release of the half year results on the 4th of November. We saw a large volume, so market wasn't that excited about the half yearly. Uh, it was a good read for me. I didn't see any problems with it, except there was one little thing. I think it was their growth rate was stagnant in terms of uh, how many churches or small churches they've brought into line in the past half year. But anyway, it wasn't that significant for me to justify a decrease in the share price that we saw. So right now it's near that bottom of that range. Um, It'd be fairly bearish if the share price dropped below about a dollar seventy. If it fell below that, that would be very bearish. And then if it goes above about two dollars twenty-five, that would be very bullish. I did a video on uh, South Thirty Two. If you look at my uh, momentum portfolio, portfolio, how it did week three. If you have a look at the chart of uh, South Thirty Two over the past four or five months, you'll see South Thirty Two trading within a range, going backward and forward about six times. And then when it uh, went through the top of the range on good volume, share prices is going, going up and up and up. And that's why um, if it breaks through the top of that range, that would be fairly bullish and that would be a good time to buy. You could trade range this also. So some trade ranges, what they do is buy at the bottom of the range, sell at the top and just keep doing that um, time and time again. So anyway, push pay is exciting. Well, not exciting to me. I'm following this closely just to see what it does uh, with the share price. If it gets above $2.25, I might actually buy, buy in. But if it falls below $1.70, I'd be hesitant to buy in. In fact, if I was a trader, I would probably sell out if it fell below the bottom of that range. The next company is Appen. This is another company I've held for a long time um, and I've done very well out of this company. Um, share price got as high as $45. $4 in late August and has fallen to about $30. So it's fallen 33% in four months. And there's no real good justification behind that selling. So I think uh, it's uh, the lower the share price falls, the more interesting I, interest that I get into adding to my holdings. Uh, but I remain patient, I don't have to add in. But if it falls to say $20, $15, that's when I get really, really interested. But anyway, just like A2 Milk, I decided to have a look at their financials over the last five years. So they've been in the, the stock market for a very similar time to A2 Milk. So again, I looked at the um, growth rate of operating cash flow and share price. See, operating cash flow has grown at over 100% per year uh, for its existence. And the share price has almost mirrored the rate of growth in operating cash flow. And that's the sort of thing I want to see. It's slightly below it. But if Appen can maintain that sort of growth rate, the share price is going to grow at a very similar rate. So if they can grow at operating cash flow for the next three or four years at 100%, the share price will follow that growth rate in operating cash flow. So we'll see significant increases in share price. But the question, of course, is can they maintain that sort of growth rate moving forward? And, of course, that's a big question. But I think they can. I, I do trust this company in their management. They did an acquisition a few years over a year ago, which I did question a little bit about. But it looks like uh, they are integrating that company but that acquisition quite well. So I may be interested in um, adding to my portfolio, uh, adding to my holdings with Appen, um, depending on how they do in the next report. And if they develop a new uptrend, that's when I might actually buy in. The last company I'm going to look at is Bravura Solutions. This is a company that I almost bought in just after the IPO, but I held back. And in fact, I had a choice between two companies and I bought another company other than Bravura. We did see the share price uh, just continue going up and up and up. Got to a price of about $6 in February, and then we've seen the share price go down, down, down. Reached a low of about $3 in the peak of the financial panic in uh, March, COVID-19 panic. Then we saw a share price rebound, just like every other company. But ever since it rebounded, or we'll reached the highs of that rebound of $5 in May, the share price has been falling. I'm not sure why, but again, when it hit $3, just like uh, it did in March, it rebounded quite nice about a month ago. And the main thing I want to see moving forward with Bravura is whether that, that $3 can be held and whether they can start a new uptrend. And when they start a new uptrend, I might buy into Bravura because they are of interest to me in a personal level. So that's all I've got on um, my potential contrarian stock buys. So five companies I'll be following quite closely over the next few months and potentially I'll either add or buy into these companies. Otherwise, if you are a financial advisor, actually, if you seek a financial advisor, 
make sure you seek out someone who is qualified. I'm not a financial advisor, so don't take anything I say as advice. That would be bad for everyone because, um, look, I'm not an advisor. If you uh, disagree with me, think uh, some of my comments are complete nonsense, leave a, leave a comment, please, because if you have contrarian thoughts, I want to hear your contrarian thoughts. Um, I'm not the smartest person in the world, so there's going to be people out there listening or watching this video who are smarter than me, and I want to hear from smarter people than me what their thoughts are, why I'm wrong, um, and that way I can learn and become a better investor. So even though you might think I'm doing this for selfless reasons, in a way I'm doing this for selfish reasons so I can learn more and more and become a better investor. But uh, the end of the end of the story is I'm not a financial advisor, so don't take any advice I have or use anything I say as advice, seek out a professional advisor who is qualified. And if you have any comments, leave it in the comment section so I can learn. So that's all for today. Have a good day. Bye.